What is up guys, Eric here with Team Eccentric and I bring you guys another dual commentary video. This is the first one in a long time. Uh, I'm on the left playing my Mermaid Atlanteans, the most recent build. Uh, with a couple cards changed in the main deck, I ended up uh, taking the Nibiru's out of the main deck and putting them in the side and I put in um, Triple Tactics Talents, uh, two copies of Triple Tactics Talents and uh, one copy, one extra copy of Small World. So I'm playing three Small Worlds now and two Tactics. I, I feel like that's actually better. Um, TJ uh, is on the right playing his uh, Punk uh, Revolution Synchron Zombies, I believe. Um, very interesting deck. Uh, a lot of really cool lines, a lot of uh, interesting uh, plays that he can make um, with that deck. It's really, really fun to see him play it um, and, you know, kind of construct uh, a board based on what he draws. It's really, really cool. So, But um, we're shuffling up. We're getting ready for game one. Um, something of note. Uh, the dual commentary videos, ba basically, the way I'm trying to structure um, my little comeback into the Yugi Tubing community, um, we roll, I rolled a 9, he rolled a 5, um, so that means I'll be starting. Um, I'm trying to structure it so that I do a deck profile, a couple combo tutorials, and then a dual video with each um, deck that I profile. So um, just uh, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, so we're starting off, and I start with a Megalo discarding Gund and Pike. Um, pretty strong opening. If I had Dragoons, it'd be a lot better. I go chain link one, um, Megalo chain link two, gun, gun target the pike. I search the abyss scale of the Mizuchi as chain link one because I want to. I want to chain block. I'm not trying to resolve Pike's effect. So I re reveal Azurine, discarding the heavy infantry, and then I use its effect to create a token. So you can see how quickly I can um, fill up the board with Mermel monsters given I draw the right amount of waters. Um, so I have the level 3 token, I have the Azurine, the Pike, and the Megalo. Um, so I use the Megalo and the Azurine, and I Xyz summon into the uh, Abyss Gaios. And then from there I Link summon the token and the Pike into a Mermail Abyss Alatia. And then I equip the Equip out to Alatia. So basically I'm just trying to establish a board with what I have. Um, you know, I, I don't have Dragoons in circulation, so there's really not much I can do besides just set up the biggest board I can, which... Uh, I feel, um, you know, the board wasn't too bad. Um, I mean, you know, rank 7. Uh, so he normal summons uh, Ziamen. And then he pays 6 to get a search. So uh, Punk Ziamen is um, a really good starter. So he searches for the Foxy Tune. And uh, from here, he's trying to figure out if um, Gaios only negates monster effects while it's on the field, or if it's um, if it negates monster effects like for the rest of the turn. And I told him it's ju it's just when it's activated, whatever's on the field. Um, but the placement of Gaios with the Alacia is really strong because it may means my monster is 33. So anything that he would have on the field that's lower than 3300 would be negated. Also, Gaios has this other effect where um, while it has material, level five or higher monsters can't attack. So he uses Foxy Tune. So he's discarding, uh, discarding it for cost, and then uh, I let it resolve, which means he gets to discard another card and then summon a Punk Monster. So he's deciding on what to discard here. So he discards a Mizuki, which is really strong. That's very very strong especially in a deck such as zombies where you're like you're trying to extend um while simultaneously fill your graveyard with things to extend with it's pretty ridiculous so he summons the deer note synchros into an eight and he summons the punk the punk synchro so he goes chain link one the punk synchro chain link two the uh, deer note so deer note will target the Xiamen and then the punk will pay 600 to search so he's already paid 1200 points putting him at um 6800 and he searches for the uh psychic tracker uh as an extender uh, it allows him to um do some really fun lines with uh immortal dragon so he specials uh the psychic tracker because he controls a level three synchros for three and he goes into the immortal dragon which is uh basically a beatrice almost for zombies and on that as soon as he activates that, I chain Gaios and negate his monster effects. Um, now the reason I did that is because I feel that that is a very good choke point for the deck, so negating that 
really allows me to, uh, you know, kind of stop them right, right, you know, dead in the water, <laughs> pun intended. Um, and then on top of that, neither of his monsters can attack regardless because of the fact that they're level five or higher and Gaius still has material. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of left him in a very awkward position where he, you know, there's not much he can do here as far as I know. Um, yeah, so, you know, the, the Gaios, the, the ending board of Gaios, Alatia with an equip spell, really actually lended itself um, to this particular matchup. Uh, especially in game, obviously in game one here. Um, so... And it's funny because I have no cards in my hand at this moment, um, meaning that you know that I, I mean I just so he sets one card from his hand and then he and I believe he passes his turn, so it's my turn. So a draw phase, and I have the top deck of the century. So I normal summon the Neptibus. That's the top deck of the century. That's that's, that's a ridiculous top deck in this particular scenario. So. Um, I use an Eptibus and I pay cost, send the Atlantean Dragoons, and then um, I attempt to resolve the Neptibus, add the Dragoons, and then I trigger the Dragoons. And he tries to call it by, but I have the equip spell, so it goes through. Um, so here, um, I notice I have five waters in my graveyard. I'm like, okay, this is, this this could be this could be something. So I add the Mooling Glacier, figuring I can uh, at least kind of remove some cards out of the equation here. So special summon the Mooling Glacier in the zone that Alicia points to, and then I roll for it. So uh, let's see what I hit here. So I hit two cards, both go to the graveyard, leaving him with only one card at the moment. And uh, he's, he, you know, he Generally speaking, you don't want to send cards to the graveyard with zombies if you can avoid it, or at least certain cards. But um, in this scenario, I felt like I could uh, game him, so I was like, well, I might as well just try and put as much damage on the board and try and make it so if I can't kill him, I can at least uh, keep him from uh, you know coming back. But So I link summon into Alatia, or I link summon into Coral Anemone. Coral Anemone, I special summon the, the Heavy Infantry. Um, thinking I can get an additional normal summon. And here I'm trying to think out the math. Um, and I link summon the Alicia and the uh, Anemone into the Atlantis. And I use the Atlantis' effect to banish everything. And I special summon everything right back. And I'm still thinking about placement. So, um... Yeah, I put the, yep, the, uh, changing, you know, just figuring out placement. So then I get the additional normal summon for the Dragoons. And then he's at 6,800, and 25, 28, and 18 is just, is just over game. So, uh, yeah, now we're moving into game two. Um, Mooling Glacier, by the way, when it was linked off, um, it only stops the battle phase of the following turn. So I was able to kill that turn, which is, uh... Something that normally, um, you know, would be a hindrance, but I was able to kill that turn, so, you know, you just go in and you just do as much damage as possible. So now we're going into game two, like I said, and we're siding. Now my ideas for siding here were to um, just do, you know, more board breakers than anything. Hand traps are okay, but they're not going to do as much against his board, because he's going to set up a board more than likely anyway. Um, because with Zombie World, he's just able to extend super far and do a lot. Um, that was my idea for siding in Game 2, so I sided in things like Evenly Matched, and I believe I sided in, uh, uh, I can't remember what else I sided in. I think possibly either DD Crow or something of that nature, just to try and, um, keep him from using Mizukis if he ever reaches those, but, um... I definitely sided in evenly matched to try and break his board. Uh, and now we're shuffling up. We're getting ready for game two. Doing this power shuffle, making sure all the cards are mixed up well, because that's one thing I do tend to do is I always shuffle and cards get pocketed together. So I'll have like 
all three Dragoons in one spot of the deck, like all the way towards the bottom, and then all of the cards that get to Dragoons like in the middle of the deck. It's like the absolute worst. Yeah, so, um, also, TJ's mat, I wanted to talk about that as well. TJ's mat is, it's unchained. It's the unchained, I think it's, uh, Shathana, I think? Or Abomination. It might be Abomination. Uh, I don't remember, but it's really, really sick. It's a really, really cool mat. So TJ's starting. Um, so he starts by normal summoning Banshee, and he, he synchros with Revolution Synchron, which is basically a, one of his strongest starts. Um, so Fairy Dragon. So he activates the Zombie World. He uses um, the Fairy Dragon to blow up the Zombie World and gain a 1,000. So he's at 9,000. Oh, he, oh, he's at 8,000 because he... No, he's at 9,000. He hasn't... And then he uses the chicken game, pays 1,000. So now he's at 8,000. Draws a card. And then he uses uh, Revolution Synchron and Foolishes. And... Yeah, so he he sent the one zombie, the, the one ghost thing that adds the, or that does stuff with ghost fusion and whatnot so then he synchros into crystal wing which is funny because he didn't even use ancient fairy dragon special summon ability but um he has a crystal wing on board to try and stop any of my uh you know hand traps or nibiru or anything of that nature just trying to establish uh early advantage you know I mean, crystal wing is such is still such a pressure card it's still really good so then he uses the uh I believe he uses the f the uh, Foxy Tune, yep, to special summon Xeomin. And then he pays six, putting him at uh, 7,400. And he adds the Deer Note. So yeah, now he pays another thousand, putting him at 6,400. And he summons the Flame Ghost, uh, which is uh, just kind of an interesting tech that he uses in order to extend. Um, like I said, this deck is very, uh, very. You know, so here he synchros into the Immortal Dragon. But yeah, this deck is in in some respects, or in a lot of respects, kind of his own creation. Um, and he uses the Immortal Dragon to foolish. Uh, and then he gets to add the Ghost Fusion, because he foolishes the, the... Yep, and then he uses the Ghost Fusion, which says that uh, if he has lower life points, he can use monsters on his field or in his deck to fuse as well. So he fuses with the Immortal Dragon, and then he uses the level 6 Chang-Chi, the Spirit of uh, Spirit Dio or whatever, and then he makes the Garura, and then he has other effects. So Chang-Chi... Um, I believe special summons, and then obviously, yep, and then he gets to, yep, banish another zombie and special summon itself, and the Spirit Dio allows him to uh, foolish another zombie, so he foolishes Mizuki, and then he can Xyz summon, and he goes into Beatrice. Um, you see the lines here, I mean, he just just sending everything from his deck to the graveyard, so he detaches Garura, and uh, foolishes... Uh, another Mizuki, and then Garura triggers, which allows him to draw a card. So you can see how how the deck, uh, you know, the lines just allow you to uh, replace the advantage you're using in some res in some ways. Um, and then on top of that, he has a field spell, and the Beatrice was hard summoned. So if he uses it during his, during my turn, during before my standby phase, to s send. Um, the uh, bell, uh, the bell roach. Uh, he can. Uh, oh, and he, he can actually. He hasn't used the. He's. He uses the banshee now to uh, activate the zombie world because um, once zombie world hits the field, all of the car, all the monsters in his graveyard become zombies, which means Mizuki works on everything. So he can literally just summon back anything. So he uses Mizuki here after using the. Uh, the Banshee to activate the zombie world and he summons back the ancient fairy dragon and then he uses another copy of Mizuki 
and targets the Revolution Synchron. And then he synchros again for 10, and he goes into Disc Patter, I believe. Yep, and there's the Disc Patter. So, very, very, very solid uh, opening turn, I must say. Um, Disc Patter is very, very good, in my opinion. I mean, that card is, it's very interesting, because the card is super complicated, or super convoluted, in my opinion, and, you know, has a lot of text on it, but um, for what it does, it, it does some really crazy things, especially with things like Cypher and Omega. But he uses the Disc Patter, and he special summons back the uh, Banshee. So he has a Crystal Wing, a Disc Patter, a Zombie World, which makes everything zombies. So he can, as long as he can keep using um, Mizukis and keep recycling them back, he can uh, he can do quite a bit here. So then here, he passes it to me. So uh, I use my draw phase, and as you can see, I draw a Deep Sea Diva, but uh, during standby, he detaches with Beatrice um, and sends the Beldrush. Beldrush uh, triggers because it's uh, still standby, and then he special summons it, which gives him basically another negate or a banish. So here I use uh, Ranajarine, I discard the Pike, and then I create the token. From here, I use Teus. I discard another copy of Ranajarine. I, I normally, it's funny, I don't draw that card as often. But then I use Pike's Effect, attempt to search. So uh, he uses Baldrush to negate the Teus, which would have searched a level 4 lower Mermail. Um, it doesn't destroy it, it just negates it. So here, I think to link up, and I, I think to do the uh, Zaylantis combo. Um, so I use the Coral Anemone. I use Coral Anemone to target the uh, Ranajarine. And then he uses Baldrush to, to banish the Ranajarine. Um, which kind of stops the play because in order... I use Deep Sea Diva. I normal summon the Diva. Attempt to summon. But as I was saying, um, I attempted to bring back the Ranajarine. And I believe because of the fact that the card was banished before it could hit the field, the uh, the Marincess's effect um, doesn't... Or it, it resolves without effect, effect, basically, and also keeps me from only being able to summon waters. So I use the Diva, and then he triggers the uh, he triggers something to destroy the Diva, and yet uh, the Neptubus still comes out. So I use the Neptubus, send the Dragoons, add the Dragoons. You know, standard stuff, standard water things. And from here, uh, you know, the only real way for me to get through this board is to just try to at least flip it all face down um not that that will actually would lead to much because if i link here which is really my only line um it leads me to only have one monster on the field and it's only a 2500 monster which isn't much considering he has disc patter and crystal wing So here he was asking about the uh, the, Mar the Marincess lock. Um, it does not apply here because I did not summon the monster back to a, to a link zone that uh, an, an enemy pointed to. So then I banish everything and try and put everything face down. But um, you will see that it doesn't really amount to anything. Um, so here, um, I just... I, there's really not much I can do here. Um, I'm just kind of like lost in the sauce just kind of like trying to get over his board and there's just no way so i attack into what i forgot was the crystal wing which has 2500 defense so i'm like all right well all right scoop it up we'll just go to game three um also i didn't see a single side deck card in that game not a single one uh, i think i believe i cited five or six cards and i did not see a single side deck card all straight up engine and nothing that was interactive engine none of my toolboxing like atlantean cards that like pot cards or anything like that so but that's okay. So we're going to game three, and I'm siding, and I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to go about um, going first. Um, and uh, I believe I have a plan. So, you know, I, I put in my side deck cards, and we're shuffling it up, and I'm getting ready for uh, game three. And TJ, uh, I know he tends to play quite a bit of hand traps, so I'm kind of gearing up for the worst here. TJ, for some reason, always has the answers. Uh, if, if anybody has played against TJ, you'll know 
Whenever you have a, like a, a clear cut, concise line of play that you want to perform, he will always somehow have the answer. <laughs> Shuffling it up, we draw our opening hands, and I be and I start the game off. So I start off uh, pretty strong, I believe here. So I go minstrel, ditch heavy infantry. Yep, and basically he had the ash blossom, so I was able to banish it before he could use it, which basically allows me to go uninterrupted. So I normal summon the deep sea diva. Now you get to see uh, basically a mermail combo. Um, in full, so summon the Neptubus, send the Atlantean dragoons. And add the Atlantean Dragoons. So Dragoons triggers. I add the Moonling Glacier. From here I Synchro Summon for three. And I go into the Goyo Defender. And I use Defender's Effect to Special Summon another Goyo Defender. That puts five Waters in Grave. So I drop the Moolin, rip two cards from his hand. One through four, and I roll for it. So that's one card down. And he has three more cards in his hand. So then I hit two cards right out of his hand. And I hit the Banshee, which is something you generally don't want to do. But there's a there's a way that I I, I play into it very well, you'll see. So I go into Bajinki Ashima and I use Bajinki Ashima's effect. So uh, he chains the, the Banshee to make everything zombies on both players' fields and in both players' graveyards. So he, summons, he activates the zombie world. So I summon the Atlantean Dragoons from hand and one from grave, and I XC summon into the zone that Bajinki Ashima points to, and that's important. Because from here, he has the zombie world on the field. Bajinki Ashima's effect, you'll see, I detach to make the toad, and Ashima pops the zombie world if an XC monster detaches to use its effect. So uh yeah, it was like the perfect, the perfect counter there. So um Atlantean Dragoon searches the Neptibus. So now I have a Toad Negate, I have Moolined him, um, and I still have a few lines. So I use Stream, Dragon Ruler Droplets, and I ditch the Neptibus. So uh, here I summon the title, and then Neptibus triggers, which allows me to target um, a Dragoons and special summon it. This is like the only argument, by the way, that you could play Poseidra is because it's a pseudo monster. Neptibus is pseudo monster reborn. So I link into the Coral Anemone, by the way. And I use Coral Anemone's effect. And I believe I target. Yeah, so Coral Anemone, I target the Minstrel. And I use Minstrel's effect, uh, send three off the top of the deck for cost. And then I put one level four or lower water back to the back to the top or bottom of my deck, so I target the Dragoons, send it back to the bottom. I Synchro for 7, and I make the uh, Deep Sea Prima Donna, which is a very, very interesting card um, that I've, you know, I, I'm so happy that this card exists. This, this card is nuts. Um, there's a card in my side deck. I, I play the Water Barrier statue. Um, so I use Prima Donna's effect, by the way, to put a Banish card back into his hand and Special Summon a level 4 lower water straight to my field. So I Synchro the Deep Sea Diva, I just summoned off the uh, Prima Donna, and the Muin into the level 10 Ice Jade. Then I use the title that I haven't used yet, um, and I XC Summon into the Mermel Abyss Gaios. As I've said, the card is so much easier to summon with title back, it's ridiculous. So my ending board is Toad, Gaios, Crow Anemone with a Free Zone, the Ice Jade, and a Bujinki Ashima. Very, very strong board. So, um... As I was saying, the I, I play the ice barrier or the um, ice barrier, the the barrier statue, the water barrier statue in my side deck because if I'm playing against a water deck, I don't want to obviously use that. But if I'm not playing against a water deck, you side it in in game three, um, and you summon that off of the uh, deep sea prima donna, and your opponent's locked. So he instant he ready fusions for the level two tuner guy, and then he normal summons the banshee. And then he synchros for six and goes into the Immortal Dragon. Or 
Yep, so he summons the Immortal Dragon. And then... So, um... I mean, I mean, playing through this board is pretty tough. So he's attempting Immortal's effect. And the Immortal fu uh, sends something. By the way, he's at 7,000 um, due to the Ready Fusion. So he's considering on what he's going to... I'm considering whether or not I want to respond with one of my cards. So I allow it. Uh, I, I, I let it go through. And here he sends from his deck to the graveyard. The ghost card, the one, the one, the, uh, oh, the ghost sleeper. So he uses sleeper's effect. And he adds a copy of ghost fusion, I believe. Yep, so he adds a copy of ghost fusion, trying to extend his board and, and uh, make it so that uh, his interactions, um, you know, seem. So he uses e here. And this is where, uh, I believe I allow it. Yep, so I allow the Italia. I, I let it go through, thinking that um, I could play, you know, I could, I could, I could definitely let this go through. Uh, he pays six, putting him at 64 to search for um, a punk card. And then I chain the Ice Jade, which basically says that if you activate this card if when you activate this card your monsters cannot be destroyed or banished but if you activate this card in response to your opponent's card effect um then any card or the cards that they would have on their field or in their grave that have that card's name that you responded to would be banished so it banishes the Xeonin. You know, i'm just trying to keep him off of uh you know extending further into um big synchro plays and making um say a crystal wing or something of that nature where yeah sure i might not have to worry about it too much but i don't want him clearing too many cards off my board with just something like a crystal wing because chris like i said crystal wing applies a lot of pressure um so he adds the deer note so yep um, he's at 6,400 because of uh, Ready Fusion and the Punk Ziamen. So he uses, he uses the Banshee in his grave to uh, activate Zombie World. And there's no way I can respond to it because Toad can't negate. I, I, don't, I don't believe Toad can negate that. So he activates the Ghost Fusion. So I towed that away, and I don't want him getting further plays. And then I use Toad's Effect in Grave to um, add back the, I believe I add back the Neptibus. Yep, so I add back the Neptibus, thinking I can clear cards. I don't have a battle phase in the following turn, because I use the Moolin to Synchro, so. Um, you know, I want ways to set up more interaction, ways to apply more pressure and, you know, just set up more negate so he can't play through another turn. So he sets one card and then he passes. However, I have a response before he leaves main uh, before he leaves his main phase. Um, he was supposed to get the Ash Blossom back, by the way. Um, so... So I detach with the Gaios to make it so that it has less materials, and I have the title engraved now. So uh, here I'm just thinking about what are the perfect lines. I believe I drew uh, Ran Azurine. So I use Coral Anemone, and I target, well, I, tar I target the Neptibus. Even though I drew a Neptibus, I figure I can use the Neptibus on field to uh, you know, add cards, use its on field effect, and I can use the one in hand for the uh, Ran Azurine. So I send Dragoons, add Heavy Infantry, trigger the Dragoons, and he activates Ash Blossom, and I allow that to go through. So 
So here I'm just thinking about what is the best line to set up another interaction because Toad is now off the board and I only play one Toad so it's not like I can make another one. So I use the uh, Azurine Send the Heavy Infantry which is like the, the best play here. So um, I can make the token but Heavy Infantry pops the Zombie World, keep him off of Zombie Lines. And I Synchro into 8 for uh, Adamantipator Risen Dragon. So that means I have Monster Negates, I have Spell and Trap Negate, I, I have um, Coral Anemone, which is a Monster Reborn, and I have the Ice Jade Ran Azurine, which prevents my cards from being targeted or banished or destroyed. So um, I have a pretty solid board here. I also have one of his copies of Ghost Fusion um, because of Toad. So, um, you know, definitely a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, really strong monsters that just prevent him from doing things. <laughs> Basically, my board says no. So he attempts some Immortal Dragon's effect. And I use the Ice Shade in response to banish the Immortal Dragon, though he still gets to send something. just considering on what to send you know thinking about um, what would be what would play through this board here the one thing about zombies though is sending them to the graveyard is great if you can get other cards on board to use them things like zombie world and Mizuki etc But uh, he's thinking about his plays here. And there's really not much I think he can do here. So he scoops it up. And that is game. Um, yeah, so uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this uh, dual video. We're going to be posting a lot more often, like I said. Um, I've definitely been filming a lot of content lately. Uh, I've been pretty inspired to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So, um, Eric here with Team Eccentric, uh, signing out.